Good morning on Boxing Day, where although it is quarter to 11 in the morning, it feels like the Marie Celeste. I have no idea where anyone but Philip is in this chateau. Though it seems that one incredibly kind elf has gone to the boulangerie and we have fresh bread. So my plan is to create a couple of epic Christmas lunch sandwiches and go straight back up to bed. I'm thinking turkey, stuffing, onion chutney, cranberry chutney, maybe even a couple of parsnips. Turns out Philip and I are not alone in the house. I just got a text from Michael saying that he is having tea with my mummy in her apartment. So I'm going to go and quickly say hello. Hello. Oh, what a beautiful sight. Now, I, I was downstairs. It was like the Marie Celeste. It is. I thought everyone had left. Did you get the bread? Yes. You were the elf. I couldn't understand why there was fresh bread. I'm making a Christmas lunch sandwich. Good for you. But I'll have a cup of tea with you. You didn't know about this, Michael, but this was a gift I found wrapped that I had wrapped for Mummy three years ago in the Chateau Diaries with Michael Petherick. And I couldn't remember what was in it, but I'm pretty sure it was from Emmaus. Ooh. Oh, well, it hasn't so, gone off. <laughs> so... Oh, goodies for us kind that must oh, remain didn't perfect. I do well, a clay mask. A little, no, that's not, that's, that's a, a candle, mummy. Oh, is it? Oh, mm. I haven't got my glasses. So that's a candle. <laughs> Nourishing body lotion. Oh, I didn't know there was a book in there. That looks like a nice book. Well, to tell you, the, can you see? Travels travel? with a donkey. Oh, yes. I Robert Louis Stevenson. Yes, you had mentioned to me because that... Because that's something you want to do. I have always wanted to do, but I think I left it a bit late. Absolutely not. It's never too late if well, a I... car is driving alongside no. with all your belongings. <laughs> <laughs> Which it would that's be. lovely, isn't it? Absolutely <laughs> lovely. Thank you. And then there is this lovely... Oh, well, I'm glad you like it, Mama. Yes. I don't know how I managed to live without it. <laughs> All these years. <laughs> I'm in the grip of a Christmas whim. I've decided that I absolutely need parsley for the sandwich. So I'm going out to see if I can find any in the greenhouse. Things are still very festive out here. Pavlida's reeds are everywhere. Good morning and merry second day of Christmas, Thor, as they say in the Netherlands. Now, oh, parsley. The greenhouse is so pretty and it's gained another ornament. I hadn't seen this one out here. I'm probably just craving greens after the excesses of the month. I'll take some rocket as well. And here's the parsley. Oh, this is going to be delicious. I love being able to just come out here and grab herbs whenever I want to add flavour to something. I'm not sure if this quite counts as having a healthy start the day after Christmas. Considering everything else that I've put into the sandwich today. I sometimes think that the leftovers are even better than the Christmas meal itself. Philip is going to love this. If I can get it to fit in the sandwich. Now that's what I call a Christmassy brunch. <laughs> Spud and Molly are getting to know each other. This is the first time they've met. Spud is Philip's parents' dog. <laughs> She's still trying to work out how she feels about it. Yeah. I think Spud's more enthusiastic than Molly at the moment. A lot more enthusiastic, yes. <laughs> she can have a new friend. I love the sort of wariness, but the curiosity. Curiosity. Yeah. <laughs> Pure yeah, she is interested. She keeps going back for more. <laughs> one does one, the other one has to do one. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a wee-off now. <laughs> this is a real wee-off going on. Yeah. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> that was lovely, though. And good morning. Are you worried about me going over the trench? I was very concerned. Yeah. Because it's vast. Spacious. <laughs> It's like walking the plank. <laughs> Quite exciting. I see that the actual wires, the conduits going in. Oh, here we've got a full kind of drawbridge -y sort of effect. <laughs> no, it's just to get the uh, tails up for the double sockets. That's one of the circuits. So that's... Oh, how fantastic. So now we've got sockets all the way around here. So the double sockets are the ones that are feeding, are powering the, uh, the fairy lights around the Esplanade trees. Yes. Then we've got the outside um circuit for the lights facing the facade yes and then we've got the third circuit which are the four lights facing the fountain itself 
So all the conduits in, I'm just now putting the um, like hard wiring and stuff. Will there now. be any spare socket if we ever want to plug a speaker so in? That's why I put double socket. We've got four double sockets. Yes. And we've obviously got four sections of the Esplade trees. So four will be in use and four will be spare. Oh, so this is fantastic. Also, you know, just working out here on the laptop, well, exactly, plug it yeah. in. So there's always the table and the chairs that are in that yes. corner there. Well, you're right next to a double socket, so someone, if they're powering oh, Amazing, lights. this is so luxurious, yeah. Anne-Marie. Yeah. And we can also plug in our, um, our de-weeder, a robotic de-weeder. Oh, once you've invented it? Yeah. Okay, so you get on to inventing it, and then we can plug it in. Hey, great. It's going to look lovely, it really is going to, I think it's going to look lovely. You and I both love fairy lights. It was when we put the fairy lights up on the, um, on the trees last year. Yeah. It looked... Magical. Yeah, it, it was really suddenly, did. suddenly magical. It really was magical. And I made yeah. a little trench so the wire is going straight down and then 600 deep coming out into the trench so that there's no worries of the... For the gardeners. For the gardeners cutting or anything. I've got one more conduit to run in and I'll put the netting around. Well, I'll put a couple of inches of soil on top of the conduit. Yeah. And then I'll put the uh, plastic netting, orange netting, warning stuff. So that, if so that everyone really go, does find out, yeah. Yeah, it's just Good. the correct way of doing it. Yeah. I'm very, very sad that we've got this hold up with the Grand Salon, uh, which is horrible. Yeah. But I have to say, you spent the time that's now yeah. suddenly spare well, doing something the other, wonderful. There's the other job that I was doing in the workshop, the radiator cover. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, there's a few others, plenty of stuff that I'm always can keep well, myself also, busy. As <laughs> soon as you that. know when you're free to tackle it, we all need to get into the stables to empty them. Yeah, so that's once this is done. This is done, then we can attack then that. Then I'm going to go into the workshop yeah. and uh, cut the workshop up. Oh, there's a lot to do. Oh, always, yes. good morning. How are you? Good, how are you? Really good. Looking at the new moat defences of the fountain. We like to protect our fountain here. And getting speakers as well. Oh, yes. We can have fanfares. That's really oh, great. yes. <laughs> I love the way Andrew's mind immediately goes to fanfares, not to music, but to fanfares. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. what you need. That's perfect. That's what, exactly, yeah, what you need. <laughs> do, 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 do. You need to get, to, you need to get yourself a uh, theme music so that it's always playing when people come into the... Uh, <laughs> you know, the it's always Mouse. That's true. No, we just need the uh, Chateau Diaries Chateau theme, Diaries theme tune. tune playing 24-7. <laughs> A lot of dog meetings today. Spud's having the most exciting day. Pick them up before they could become lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe you're leaving with the leave pugs. With <laughs> <laughs> They're coming back, aren't they? They're coming back from mini break. They come back from mini break. Whenever you go away. But you ever want rent a pug? <laughs> if you need little cuddles in the afternoon, they're all yours. <laughs> Put that poodle weed on you again. <laughs> You'd be oh, like, yeah. where are they? <laughs> yes. You weed on the cashmere, didn't you? Yes, you did. So this is a lovely, warm, soft place to pee. <laughs> I like that you didn't give him back, though. You just sat there. <laughs> but he's still so lovely. <laughs> Whilst everyone's preparing for Boxing Day barbecue downstairs, I've come up for a little bit of undecorating. Now, that's very rare because generally we leave the decorations up at La Land until the end of February because I just love the little sparkly lights. It gets us through the dark months. But I don't leave the advent calendars out because that would just feel a little bit weird. And that means that I have to take them down. And I'm pretty sure that my mantelpiece is going to look very, very bare. They've been a joy all month. This one's really nice. This was Phillips. Every day it plays a little different tune for Christmas. I've absolutely loved it. But time for it to go. I really enjoyed waking up and seeing the advent calendar first thing in the morning during December because I think it's really important that one of the first things you see when you wake up in the morning makes you happy which is why opposite the bed I have one of my favourite paintings by my father and then we also have things that remind Philip of people that he loves. His grandfather bought this with him at a flea market for one euro, is that right? Yes, I bought it for one euro uh, and it's Moza, it's uh, Master of Ceramics. Yeah, and look how pretty it looks with the toile de jouet. It looks really well. Yeah, and this was your grandmother's as well? Yes. So 
that was my grandma's was always on a coffee table. So I used to look at that when I was a so kid. So we have things that remind us of people that we love. I don't know what the final look is going to be here. We're probably going to get a beautiful clock one day. I don't know. But for now, it's just things that make us happy. And the clock, I would love a clock there, but you hate the sound of ticking I can't have clocks. Ticking. I can't have them ticking. No, I love that. Ticking, it makes me it. really happy when it's ticking in the background. It makes me feel like the room's alive. But we both love plants. So we put plants here. These two are here. We've added another three here one of which is nearly dead. And that is because whilst we love plants, we are catastrophically bad with them, well, especially orchids. I love orchids so much. Oh, I keep I telling like orchids. huge display of orchids here. Oh. No, but I have the solution. I've been trying out a new app. It's yes. called Planter and I am loving it so much. And I'm really lucky because they have offered to sponsor this video with an ad. And actually I couldn't wait to share it with you all anyway. This is the plant that I have. For example, in the dining room, you all know our plants in the dining room because they're in those huge terracotta urns. It's called a Monstera. And look, it's telling me in two days time, I will get a notification telling me that it is time to water it. If you have the premium version of the app, you get a full care schedule. In three months time, I need to replace the fertilizer sticks. And there's a full care schedule, which tells me not only when to water it, but also when to mist it, when to repot it on the 19th of March, that will be happening. And even when to clean it. I didn't even know I had to clean my plants. Is that why we don't keep orchids alive? We're supposed to be cleaning the orchids. One of the plants in here is in a very sorry state. Poor Philip's been trying to keep it alive. We have never known what it was because they came from the supermarket with no labels. So now I'm gonna find out by taking a photo of it. Let's find out what it is. Fleur de Lune, hello Fleur de Lune. Add the plant. Ah, uh, it wants to be right in front of a window. This ah. I think, well, already that's something we didn't know. It came in a plastic pot. We repotted it in a terracotta one. And when did we last water it? Well, that was you, Philip. When did you last water the plant? Uh, yesterday. Yesterday. Okay. I'm activating the care schedule. We'll have to water it again in two days time. I think it's time to update its health to catastrophically bad. There's a really cool feature called Dr. Planter. So if you have a sick plant, it can help you diagnose it. So I've taken lots of close-ups of the sick plant. It has analysed them and its diagnosis is, Philip, we've been overwatering it. Oh no. I know. Well, you know what? I think maybe because the plants came together as one, like in one pot. Yes. Maybe we should separate so them. Exactly. And that's not. Yeah, we have to separate them. The treatment plan is called Save from Drowning. So in fact, it does want us to repot it and put it in a much lighter location. And obviously we will not be watering it for a little while. But I can easily find a new plant that will go in its spot once it's been moved because it's completely personalised. There's a light meter, so it tells me exactly which plants will be happy with the amount of light in this spot. And also when you register for the app, you tell it whether you're a beginner or whether you're really good at looking after plants. Obviously, I said I'm a complete beginner. And then under the discover section, it tells you which plants would work in a specific location for your specific abilities. I'm so excited because we are finally going to be able to keep our plants alive. I can't wait view from the bed. Yes. In fact, New Year's resolution. Yes. Okay, just decided our New Year's resolution should be to keep an orchid alive. I mean, that's a tough one. Orchid it is. Orchid it is. All if right. If you would like to join us in keeping plants alive in your home as a New Year's resolution, then you can try Premium Planter by clicking on the link in the description box below because Planter are offering all of my viewers a 14-day free trial of their premium subscription. It's time for me to step away from the plants. I'm going to go and see how things are getting on in the kitchen. So now it's time for a brioche break. Now it's time for three o'clock brioche. You got the special one. Yes. Our favourite brioche. Is that the caramel one? It's the caramel one. Oh, I love it. <laughs> this is the life. Tatina, you fall in love with this brioche too. I love it. I know. I think the most delicious brioche I've ever tasted. <laughs> yeah, honestly. I agree. And I have the specialties in brioche, but this one is absolutely amazing. <laughs> the problem is look at that plate, so look at mine. <laughs> oh, you've got a little diet. You can, you can, yes. No, no, I've, I've, no, I've been eating when you've been talking. <laughs> there's, it's so morph. You, there's more of it there. You oh, have gosh, a second. No. It's only taken one day and they're now the best of friends. Spud and Molly are going everywhere together. <laughs> Where did Spud go, hey? Where's Spud? <laughs> Dana, that is the best Boxing Day jumper and I am jealous. I don't know if we should take it badly because this is a real jumper. Okay. It's a real jumper. It's a Ralph Lauren. Oh, look at that. Well, hey, hey. I am wearing Beryl and oh. I love this jumper. <laughs> Beryl's coming on the 28th. 
No, you oh are joking. God, yeah, she's passing by. No oh, way! And is Ralph coming round to see you, Dana? Oh, of course. <laughs> I am making again for you, Stephanie, for your me. favorite food ever. Burgers. Burgers. I These burgers it. are with ras and chanut. Oh, nice. And there are burger, other burgers with cumin and paprika. So there's Moroccan spices. It's, it's Moroccan. Here you have Cote d'Agnon, a lamb, 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 cho cho lamb chop. This is meat. I already put uh, lots of uh, just garlic. Just meat? Anything more spe specific or just meat? Well, we are making barbecue. It's the Boxing Day. Do you have any idea? Beef. Thank you. <laughs> oh, excuse me. That's me. <laughs> that, well, for me, meat is red. And then you have white. It's the pork. Oh, no way. <laughs> Someone's busted out the egg slicer. Oh. Look at that. Look at that. I wonder if that's the one my father had bought. My father loved a good kitchen gadget. It could well have been his egg slicer. This is going to be... Never known to use any of the kitchen gadgets, no. but did love them. Um, that's going to be egg salad. Uh, potatoes. No, potatoes, please. The yeah. eggs, we added it a little Well, it's after. a bold, bold choice, the um, sliced eggs in it, but I like it. Yeah. It's a very mm -hmm. boxing day. Uh, uh, Michael, you must tell her one thing. Oh, what must you tell ten years we're doing boxing day together. Yes. Yeah. Mike this is a Mark. beautiful moment. Michael you two, the boxing day team. It's been ten years I know you. It's been ten years I'm celebrating Christmas with you. Mm -hmm. And it's been since I thought you were the, um, actually... <laughs> Should we say that? <laughs> First time I saw Michael, yeah, I thought he was your. How would you say? No. Butler. The Butler. Butler. Yes. <laughs> well, excuse me. We arrived, and he was dressed like a butler, and he was like, "Do you want a drink? Do you want this?" Because that's the way we roll round here. Like, oh my God! Yeah, she has a. Butler. Would you consider taking on that role? Because we could really do with it. <laughs> These are mushrooms oh. with garlic, cheese, variety of cheeses. Oh, no, that is a magic and, mushroom. And um, all sorts of yummy things. It's going to be absolutely oh. heavenly. Have I ever mentioned that I love Boxing Day barbecue? And we've got hummus. We're going to do a green salad, red salad. It's going to be smashing. Oh, and I'm doing South African roosterbrot. You're doing what? <laughs> roasted bread. Excuse you? <laughs> um, which is uh, roasted bread, which is absolutely delicious. It's sort of a, uh, a strong white flour uh, bread. Oh, so you, I thought you were doing something to bread. You're actually making, making the yeah. bread. Yes. Oh, what a day. And then you, you barbecue it in a loge. So at the end of the... Um, as the fire is dying down, you, you barbecue it. So it's almost it like... nice and smoky and crispy. Is it a bit like the Australian? Is it dampener bread or something they call it? So you make that on a fire, it's I think. Nice. Mm. Mm. And Natty, I see yeah. that you're also doing something over yeah, there. Yes, so I just say that, oh, oh meat. Oh. And they say asado. So I said, we need to do some chimichurri. There's too many Argentinians around, and I know that Amory loves it, so... You yeah. can't have our meat I'm without trying. chimichurri. Yeah. I'm trying to do something. We have some parsley and... I am going garlic. to love whatever it is you're making. And I'm going to make one spicy. Mm. One without. One for you and Philip, and one yeah. for the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Moon's out. Moon's out. It's a beautiful. Oh, it, it is. is. A Present. Night. But it's beautiful tonight. So we're on a parsnip mission. Yes. Because you believe there are still parsnips in this garden. Yes. And I want to barbecue them. Okay, yeah. but I don't think I've ever had a barbecue pasta. No, I've never had a barbecue pasta, but I can't see why it wouldn't work. And then Natty wants me to get some oregano for her, for her sauce. Are they in here, parsnips? What does a parsnip look like when it's still in the ground? That's why I brought you. Oh dear. <laughs> you picked your partner in crime yeah. most unwisely. I thought I found a parsnip. Okay, well I can spot a radish when I see one and they are radishes. Those yes. Are definitely radishes. What about in front of the radishes? More radishes. Okay. Okay, I feel we've just found... Radishes. Radishes. Can I do anything with radishes in a barbecue? What's that over there? Is that green? How about radishes? Well, actually, oh, radishes yeah. would be delicious in the potato salad. Oh, no. Oh, I love a radish in a potato salad. I, I can set them up next to it, so civilised people can choose not to have it. These look like... Oh. No, they don't look anything like carrots. Do you eat this bit or do you eat this <laughs> what's under here? Give I think you eat what's under that. Give it a tug, an exploratory. Oh. 
bother. Oh! It is a parsnip, it's a world's Or is it a tarnap? It's, it's large. Oh, it's always an exciting adventure coming out into this garden. I think this is. Look a that. lot of people are watching this out there thinking, I would not want to be stranded on a desert island with either of these two. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> no wonder it wouldn't come out when he yanked it. Do you think we were supposed to bring some Shovel. sort of implements? <laughs> That's not a parsnip. Oh, what is it? I think it's a turnip, but you've, you know, you've immersed it now, so I'm just... Continue. Yes. Take two, you found an implement in the beautifully decorated greenhouse. I think those roots are in Australia. Try and go under it with the, with the scooper. My scooper isn't that big. Ah, the twist technique. Mm. Invented by Michael Potts <coughs> at Failed. the end of 2022. Failed twist technique. <laughs> you might have to go into um, a time lapse with us. <laughs> oh dear, it's double handed. Well, you're going to go <laughs> flying backwards. Now that actually, I think it might be a parsnip. I think it might be the world's biggest parsnip. <laughs> Can we end this in the county fair? <laughs> oh. Okay, that's what one should do it. <laughs> yeah, there's only 20 of us, we'll be yeah, fine. fine. Wow. Okay. Who knew it'd be such hard work? Yeah. Good luck. All right. Getting the others. <laughs> Another 10 to go. <laughs> Sorry, Michael, would help. Must look for oregano though. I actually think it's marjoram, but it tastes much the same. Mind you, something there says oregano. It tastes just like it. I just heard a bit of a scream from the parsnip patch. What happened? It was even bigger. <laughs> Do you think we left them a bit too long? Look at that. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Can someone fill in Guinness, please? There we go. Being quite good at this. That's a, that's a titchy one. <laughs> this one seems to be giving you even more trouble. Is that the biggest yet? This is the, the biggest in recorded history. So I don't know about you, but I'm thinking that four parsnips for 20 people seems very reasonable. Yes. And it we should- Overly generous. Overly, I think we should just leave it at that. Mm. I've always said the best part of the parsnips are the leaves. I mean, should we just nibble on those instead? Deep fried <laughs> in honey. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> How could that be a parsnip? <laughs> you did it! Oh, huh. huh. Millions of people around the world now thinking, I think I would like to be stranded on a desert island with yes. Mr. Potts. He'll get us parsnips. Yes. Or, or whatever this thing is. Yeah, this is it. This is the hangout zone. <laughs> Ooh. They only look burnt. But they're not. No, I understand. It's a trick no, of the The masquerading is burnt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the Ambrose Chalet. Oh, Thailand. the parsnips. I'm glad I didn't miss the great cooking of the parsnips. Mm. The mandrake it, it root was a one. Beast. Yeah, did you Took remember? About 20 minutes to peel. <laughs> <laughs> you should have filmed that. So you know, you know, that was more scary. That was more I painful. had a little bit of an internal breakdown during that. So have it's, we decided it definitely is mandrake? It's mandrake root. <laughs> it was mandrake root. Mm -hmm. All along. Oh, yeah. Which is good luck, I think. The bread, whilst just a little charred on the outside, looks perfect inside. Oh, look at that butter <laughs> melting. Are you Mm. The bread's a triumph. Okay, Stephanie. Let's get a chick's friend. Mm, Don't get <laughs> Philip friendly. Oh, Donna. I think it's amazing. Philip friendly. What would you say? Not Philip friendly. <laughs> because it has sesame in it. The parsnips are deemed ready. Parsnips. Do you think they are ready? They only look burnt. They're not ready. Mm. Well, you know, your bread looks burnt and your bread's delicious. This is perfect. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, that looks perfect. Well done, Nigel. Dana, super. Well done and less. This is a triumphant Boxing Day barbecue. Oh, the pulled pork. I love the fact it's finally out. We didn't yeah. need it in the end on Christmas Eve. No, we didn't. No, but two days later, it's gonna. it's perfect. Yes. yes. Just needed more time to fall in love with itself, really. Mm. 
didn't I do well? Another triumph from you, Mummy. Thank you, it's okay, I accept. I accept it, thank you. <laughs> Boxing Day barbecue was delicious. I can't believe the Christmas festivities are over. I'm snuggled up in bed and I think I'm gonna finish the evening with a very good book. I have a beautiful view. I'm not even missing the advent calendars. And remember that if you'd like to join us on our Plant Adventure New Year's resolution, then you can try Planter out for yourself by clicking the link in the description box below. Night night from La Land, everyone. Huge thank you to all of the patrons of the Chateau Diaries who make these videos possible. And today I'd like to say a special thank you to Jason Doobie, Jackie Ellison, Kevin Fossum, Fifi Greenberg and Donald Gutmiller. Thank you to all of you and to everyone watching. And I can't wait to see you next week when we'll be sharing our New Year's celebrations at La Land. <laughs>